Today I'm going to talk to you about Epic 3, the projection and the different functions that we have in projection. So I'm in the sewing mode right now and that's the mode I'm going to show it to you in. And I'm going to go ahead and touch the projection button, which is right here. And always remember, if you don't remember what an icon is, you can always come up here to the question mark. And when the question mark is throbbing, so to speak, if I touch something, it'll tell me what it is. So you can touch anything on the screen and it'll tell you what that icon is if you touch the question mark first. Okay, I digress. So let's go and touch the projection icon and we're going to get a fairly long menu. So right now I have the projection is not on. So I'm going to go down here to projection and I'm going to touch that switch. And did you notice when I went and said, turn the projector on that it dimmed the workspace over here automatically so that I can start to see some of those functions I'm going to show you um, under the needle and I'm just going to grab a book or something plain to put on the back there so you can see it. Oh, let's see here. We've got some paper. We'll do that. Okay, so I'm going to put that under there so you can see what just happened. So right now uh, I turned it on and we have a series of options under projection. So I'm going to just shut I, what I'm going to do is shut them off so that you can see them one at a time. All right. So right now I have it on stitch preview and you can't really see anything. It just looks like a straight line in um, regular sewing. So I'm going to quick flick over here and get something so that you can at least see the zigzag. Okay. And now, now if you can pan in there, Gerald, you see the zigzag line? So it'll actually show you the stitch and how it's going to sew on your piece of fabric. So that is the um, stitch preview projection. So if you're doing a decorative stitch, I mean, this can be really handy seeing what it's going to look like. When the presser foot comes down and you begin sewing, the stitch is then going to disappear and get out of your way. So then the next, I'm going to let stitch preview on. So the next one down is the grid. So I'm going to touch the grid. And now I have turned on a grid that um, is on both sides of the presser foot. And we don't just have a plain grid. So if I touch the drop down arrow beside the grid, then we can go ahead and look at some of that functionality. Maybe. Maybe. Okay. It doesn't like my fingers right now. Okay, well, what I want to tell you about this is that we can adjust the, the grid. If I wanted to sew one inch, if I wanted to sew a quarter inch, I can go ahead and adjust that grid all over the place. Okay, so I'm going to shut the grid back off for a second. And my fingers are, are uh, you can see they don't want to play with me. All right, so we're going to leave the grid on for right now, and I'm going to turn on Stitch Guide 1. So now I have two stitch guides, and I just put on number 1. Okay, and then maybe I put on number 1. Come on. Okay, so in Stitch Guide number 1, you can select what color you want, and you can see right here I have the red going. Um, and I can adjust the thickness of that line for uh, stitch guide number one. So I could make it narrower or so you can see how it got a little smaller or I can make it fatter depending on, you know, this is all situational on what you're actually sewing, what you want to do with it. So that's number one. And then let's say... This is the example I like to give. You guys know what a omni stitch is, and that would be one of those stitches that moves all over the place and you kind of have a little bit of a trouble um, finding your way with it. So I actually have two stitch guides I can use. So I can take and move one of these all the way over. And let's say I want to move it over. We're going to just say five, five, zero, and say okay. 
it doesn't like that number, let's just say five. Okay, I'm not doing very good at picking the numbers. Okay, let me put my glasses on. All right, let's say we want it to be five. Okay, so it kind of moved it. You can see it kind of moved it left of the stitch. And I could keep going and moving it over, move it over farther. All right, so that's number one. So now I'm going to slide down here and now let's go to stitch guide number two. And let's get the little drop down under him, if it's going to come for me today. The other one was. There we go. Okay. So now this guy, I'm going to make him, if I touch the middle, I'm going to make him minus five. Minus five. Okay, and I'm going to say okay. So now you see, oh, and he's on an angle, so I'm going to take the angle off. So now you can see I have two stitch guides right here. And I can move that one even farther out to the side. Cancel. Sorry. All right. Why is this important? So I'm going to pop that guy off right now. And I'm going to put up the IDT. And then I'm going to go to my stitch menus. And I'm going to find my wide stitches that I'm trying to kind of talk to you about. Vintage, this and that. Omnimotion stitches. All right. And I'm just going to go ahead and pick one. All right. So now you can see it in the preview mode but you also have these two guidelines. So what happens when we put that S foot on is our fabric and our, is kind of gonna go all over the place in conjunction with that particular stitch or anything here in, in the Omni stitches. The Omni stitches are the ones that are wider than your stitch plate or your stitch hole of nine. So they're gonna feed back and forth, frontward, sideways, and sometimes we have trouble. So if you have those two guides right here, and you start stitching that stitch, and if you do one at a time, then you got your needle down and you can start making a little maneuver when it's done with the stitch so you're not getting all crazy wonky. So that is a great function of the stitch guide. So back up at projection. So you can use all these things together. You can not use them at all. Uh, the other thing on those stitch guides is you can also put them on an angle and my fingers are not cooperating here. Come on. I think if I hold my tongue the other way. Okay, I'm going to stop. So anyway, you can stitch, you can put these stitch guides onto an angle, which makes it really easy as well. If you're trying to do, say, half square triangles or that sort of thing. So anyway, you have all this functionality here in projection on your Epic 3, which was not on your Epic 2. So that's it for tonight. Ciao.